Yeah. Hey man, this reminds me of your rig, man. Dude, I've got like four or five of them. <laughs> Hey, today we're working on the toy hauler, but the deal is we didn't have room in our shop, so we hooked up with some buddy of ours down here at Longview RV Supercenters. They've got all the room that we're gonna need. Yeah, their new digs are gonna accommodate us well. We got that electric to disc brake conversion. It's gonna be cool. Yeah, all that and more coming up today on Truck U. We haven't upgraded these brakes sooner, man. <laughs> well, it had to happen eventually, man, no doubt. Hey, welcome to Truck U. I'm Matt Steele. I'm Bruno Massel. This is absolutely beautiful out here. Huge bay, all these high dollar RVs laying around. Dude, we got to talk to somebody about this. We got to make something Man, happen. I'm loving these digs. Maybe when they close down tonight, we can sneak in and take one of these half million dollar motorhomes for a ride. Then, of course, we could always just, you know, talk to somebody and ask them. I don't know. Bruno's got one that way, way of doing though, it. You know? I've got another. All right. Task all, at all, hand. All kidding aside, we, the first thing we got to do is get this all apart. Since we're going from the electric brake to the disc brake assembly which is going to be better for a lot of different reasons which we'll get into here in a little bit right. here i'll get that pin thanks dude all right let me sneak in here you got the cap off that's yeah. good surprisingly this isn't really that hard to take apart you know it's just right. a cotter pin that comes across the top got to get this big jamming off is probably the hardest thing I got there it. we go got that broke loose you know it's kind of weird because they've got this little uh grease fitting right through the center so that cotter pin runs to the top but other than that it's a pretty simple deal. I'm gonna move some stuff out of the way here for when I set this down. Now this whole assembly should just pull right off especially with Matt's brute strength. Oh yeah I've been known <laughs> to put the power to it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. You got that? Yeah. You catch I'll that? I'll catch it. All right there we go. All right so that's good that's out of the way then all we have to do is get this back plate off the flange and we'll pretty much have everything apart then we can get this out of there and kind of take a look at we could take a look at the guts of this and take a look at the, any number of things that could really go wrong. And there are many. <laughs> All right. All right. Here's what you're looking at when you're talking about an electric braking system. As you can see, there are a lot of working parts there, which means there's a lot of parts that can fail. And failing when it comes to brakes, not a good combination. Not at all. Now, this is how the whole deal works. You've got this magnet right here. Now, pretend this is all kind of sandwiched together, right? The magnet actually attaches there through the electrical current. And then when it starts spinning around, the centrifugal force will actually kick this arm out. And that pushes the shoes out. And the shoes push against the inside of the drum right there. That's how you stop. But like Bruno said, there's a lot of things going on in here and over time a lot of things can go bad. Yeah especially first of all is with the magnet and it's something that's called brake fade. What happens is the longer you've got this magnet applied the hotter it's going to get. The hotter it gets it loses its magneticity and yes magneticity. It's five syllables. But the hotter it gets so it loses it so what's going to happen it's not going to want to grab it won't want to apply your brakes. Now think of it you're going down like Eagle Mountain something with a steep decline you got right. four wheelers cutting in in front of you and you've got a big 10,000 <laughs> 20,000 pounds pushing behind you you're going to only have about 30 percent of your braking power at the end. And at that point, what do you do? You bail off the side of the mountain. It's not worth it to go with a 1940s technology when you've got $40,000 rig behind you, plus whatever you're pulling behind it, the extra 500 bucks or so you're going to uh, yeah, save, put yeah. in your pocket, it's not worth the safety factor. That's it's a couple not. of brake jobs, man, really. Yeah. So if you just go with the disc brakes right off the bat, sure, you spend a couple extra hundred bucks, but you're going to save money in the long run, and it's going to be nice and easy, and you've got just not as many chances for failure, man. This, this is, like you said, it's old antiquated technology. Now, the other thing that comes into play is the adjustment. Okay? When this brake pad wears out, it loses its ability to grab. So you've got to go ahead and hit this little expander here to adjust the brakes to compensate for the loss of brake pad material. Well, keep in mind, you've got four of these on a trailer like we've got here. Each one's got to be adjusted the same so they all apply at the same time. It's almost impossible to do so. Plus, you've right. got to take this whole thing apart to <laughs> yeah. do it for each one of them. Yeah. Forget about all the current factors and other things that go into play. You're going to have one side grabbing for the other or front and back grabbing separately. It's just not a good braking system. Now, here's another little bonus right here. Look at those big cracks. That's pretty. All right. So... <laughs> You know, big problems. All right, but this is out, and that's good. Now we're ready to take it to the next level. All right, that's out of the way. Now we got everything for a new brake system from the guys over at Southwest Wheel. That's cool. That's all taken care of. Now we're getting ready to put on the Kodiak disc brakes, but before we do that, we've got a little house cleaning to take care of down here. Yeah, first you want to do is clean up all this old grease and dirt and grime down here. A little brake parts cleaner and a rag should do the trick. Next thing you do is go put, ahead and put on our... Uh, 
brake caliper mounting plates. Now it's nice because these are labeled outside, outside. It leaves it kind of idiot proof, where, <laughs> meaning the outside of the trailer. Slides on here and the instructions call for it to be mounted about nine o'clock, but because of this application, we're at seven and that should pretty much do the trick. Okay, cool. We'll torque those down to about 25 pounds. We'll take care of that. We gotta go to break right now, but when we come back, we can actually look at the Kodiak brakes and see how those things are gonna work.